Hello and welcome back to Rodney Parade Newport and welcome to FM 22 with Old Man Phil. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click that bell so that you'll be updated when future videos are uploaded and do all the other stuff to help the channel grow. And if you already have been following along, you'll know that this team was promoted as champions from the Skybet League 2 to the Skybet League 1. But you'll also know that it is no, was nowhere near good enough to be able to survive in the higher league. So we had to do some stuff as we were going into the summer transfer window. A little bit tricky as we'd only received from the board 7k in transfer funds which was going to make it very very difficult indeed but with a little bit of financial jiggery pokery and one or two very nice little moves we probably can improve this squad so let's first of all have a look at how we got on in the transfer window and the first thing that we had to do was have a clear out and Wilmot Fisher Telford Hall and Masulu were all let go at the end of their contracts. And Cooper, who we were still keen to re-sign, and Azaz, who was very unhappy at the time, returned to their respective clubs from their loan period with us. And what that meant was that we had now freed up seven spaces in the squad, which we now hope to fill with players that were much better than we currently had. And so, let's see who we were able to manage to bring in. Well, as I said, it was a very, very busy window. And the first thing that we did was to bring in Dan Sweeney for a fee of 55,000 pounds, probably rising to around about a hundred um, over the next year or so. Um, but I like the look of him. He's, um, his physicals are very, very good. And he's got um, numbers where I need him to have numbers. Um, um, and although not an exceptional player, a very good buy for us. Timmy Abraham, you know already about um, the striker on loan who we wanted to keep. And Jamie Storey came in as a um, wing back um, to replace Wilmot, and he looks like a very, very good player as well. Liam Brown, I wasn't sure about him, but I brought him in on loan um, from Queen's Park. Um, and hopefully he will prove to be um, a good player. He has some good potential, I think. He has, um, he's got good mentals um, and his technicals are not bad for this level. And I, I'm hoping that he might um, be a good replacement for Cooper um, in an attacking midfield. And then we brought in Joe Nuttall. Well, I didn't bring him in. My, um, my director, <laughs> brought him in um, for some reason um, he does have um, he does have some good physical so hopefully he'll be able to provide a more physical um, aspect to our attack which is young um, and doesn't have those physical attributes we'll see how he goes and then Josh Park was a, an immense signing um, and we brought him in for a very very low fee and he again is very strong he has good pace and I need pace at the back um, so I brought him in for a fee of 4.8 an absolute steal and then finally we've brought in Charlie Lakin and I'd been looking at him for the um, second half of the season he was a bit pricey um, uh, but in the end we were able to manage to bring him in and he looks like a good um, box to box midfielder to me and I hope we're gonna get some good form out of him this this season and then what happened as a result of all that and even with all that we still have 83,000 left in the transfer budget but unfortunately we are very close to our limit on the wage budget and um, unfortunately I'm not allowed because of financial fair play to make any adjustments to that but we have one more um, deal that we might be looking to do in terms of bringing in Daniel Williams from um, Swansea on a loan deal and I think we're very close to getting that over the line and he might well be a good addition this year to um, the squad and we might even look at uh, if he 
comes and lives up to his potential, we may even be looking to sign him at the end of his one year loan with us. And so, yes, it was a very, very busy transfer window and, and very pleasing. Um, but even though we have strengthened the side in a number of areas, I still think that we need a miracle. And this has been backed up by the media who um, have us placed at 23rd and almost favourites for relegation this season, even after all that transfer activity. We shall see if their prediction turns out to be a an accurate prediction. But the board were, if they weren't kind in their transfer budget, they were, have been kind in their expectations of us. And nothing really has changed since the last episode. Now we have to play defensively solid and play counter-attacking football. And I believe that we can do and achieve both of those things. They only expect us to fight bravely against relegation. But it's still possible. If we don't, I might lose my job. In terms of the squad, I decided, and why wouldn't I, um, to keep the um, system that we were playing last year, um, which served us so well. We made one little tweak during pre-season um, to make the left wing back into an inverted wing back, but I, looking at it, I don't think it's working too well, so we're probably going to change that back. But what I did notice was, um, and this is the big change that I've made, um, that we were very poor. Um, compared to the rest of the teams in this league in intelligence on the field. <laughs> Sometimes I think off the field too. Um, but that's another story. Um, so basically what I did was I kept the same um, system as last year. They know it well and they can play it well. Uh, but what I did was make it as simple as possible and take away any decision-making um, from them because that's where we're most weak um, and um, I gave each player in the squad individual instructions to play according to his or his strengths or weaknesses and so hopefully they'll be able to remember how they played last year and also by giving them individual instructions that might help them to work out what they're supposed to be doing we shall see and so with great trepidation, we moved into pre-season. But as you can see now, pre-season went remarkably well. And that included a 2-0 victory at home to Shrewsbury, who also are in the Skybet League One. And that was a very, very pleasing result. And we also beat Swansea 1-0 at home, um, which, again, surprised me a great deal. Things were looking good as we went into the new season. And against, and against Crewe, we played in a very positive way. And... Um, in a very exciting game, we managed to come out on top and win that game 4-2. And that was very quickly followed by an even better result against Bournemouth of the Premier League, where we drew 1-1, but won the game on penalties. And so I have chosen Bristol Rovers um, to be our uh, first featured game, thinking that we'd both be at the bottom of the table, both being promoted teams, and that uh, this would be a six-point earlier in the season um, against our bitterest and nearest rivals. But it didn't turn out to be that way because Bristol Rovers also won their first game, and so we are both somewhere near the top. And this game could turn out to be um, a benchmark for how the rest of the season pans out. And so, um, in this very big game, so early in the season, this will be a good time to let's check on the team selection. And so the team for today is Joe Day in goal. Farkerson, Pask and Parker at the back. Parker has been brought in because of his pace. And at wing back we have Jamie Sterry and Aaron Lewis. And in midfield, because Dolan is injured, I've brought in Charlie Lakin for his first game, and he will partner Ed Upson. And uh, Liam Brown makes his debut in a Newport jersey. Up front, we have Timmy Abraham, and Jermaine Hilton comes in because he has been in outstanding form of late.
And so Newport, get us underway. And here's Parker. We have decided to play on the front foot, and that's exactly what we're going to do. And Parker's on the front foot already. He's away and running. And he finds Lewis on the outside. Lewis, he passes it back to Parker. I'm hoping for a good game from Parker today. And there's a speculative long ball forward. And we need to get on the front foot. And we need to score as as in, in the early stages of the game. And here's a corner for Newport. We are dominating the game in the first 10 minutes. And that's swung in by Lewis and Park has put it in at the near post. And that is exactly what we wanted. A perfect start for Newport. And I couldn't have wished for anything more from the boys than to score in the first quarter of an hour of the game. And what a fabulous start that is. And let's hope we can go on and build on that. We are a team that likes its set pieces. And um, we are blessed with corner kickers, with um, throw-in experts, and with some free kick experts. So why not use that? And we are set up to play for free kicks. And it's paid off. And um, we are leading at the moment by one goal to nil. But here come Bristol Rovers. Bristol Rovers looking to build an attack. And that's out to Grant. And Grant, he has Lewis in front of him. And easily dispossessed, dispossessed by Lewis. And now it's a day, day to Farquharson. Who'd have believed that Newport would have made such a good start? As long as we can keep this momentum going in this game, there is nothing to stop us. And he find, day finds Parker. Parker, who is, I think, an awesome signing. Although he's not one who enjoys big games, as we saw in the last game against Bournemouth, but he does have great pace at the back. And here's Hilton. Hilton, he looks for Abraham, and Abraham fires it straight at the goalkeeper. And so we sit in second place at the moment, and I, I just do not believe this is happening. As Lewis, Lewis fires in a corner, and Farquharson rises and doubles the lead, and yet again, it's from a set piece, and Bristol Rovers are unable to cope with our dominance in this area of the game. Lewis, a simple near post corner, and Farquharson, above his man, heads it in, and it's now Bristol Rovers nil, Newport two. And with just 23 minutes gone, we have another free kick, and Parker finds himself in uh, foreign territory and does the sensible thing and fires it back towards his own defence. And it's going to be picked up by Laking. Laking, a debutant today, uh, making his first appearance for Newport County. He finds Sterry. Farquharson gives it back to Lakin, and he passes it back to Pask. Parker. Parker to Lakin. It needs to come out wide, but we do play um, a little bit on the narrow side, but if he could have put it out wide, that would have been good in that in that circumstance but here's Sterry past his man very easily past his man now can he get across him turns back finds Farquharson who's having a great game and he finds Sterry Sterry to Upson and that is another corner and so we have another corner over on our left hand side now can Lewis provide another opportunity here comes Lewis, fires it in, and that's headed away this time. And so at the moment, we are sitting top of the Sky Bet League One. And after two games, I wouldn't have believed anybody if they had told me that. But I'm starting to believe it now. Here's Sterry to Abraham. Abraham finds Hilton. Hilton to Lakin. And Lakin obviously doesn't know that Hilton doesn't have any pace and tried a little cute through ball there, but didn't pay off. And here come Bristol Rovers. That's a long kick. And Abraham. Abraham, this is Anderson. Um, Anderson swings in across. And that is a chance for Bristol Rovers. And we do need to be careful. I'm starting to get a bit concerned about the space that they are finding 
out wide and I don't like it when teams are swinging in these crosses into our penalty area um, and Bristol Rovers are doing a lot of that and here comes another one and that's headed away this time and although they're getting a lot of crosses in they're actually not getting on the end of them too much but here comes another cross and that's a header but it's too far out to really worry day and so as half time approaches we just need to stay in control and there is half time and the score at half time is Bristol Rovers nil Newport 2 and so basically we just need to say more of the same boys at half time it's been an absolutely stunning performance in the first half and if we can just do a little bit more then the game is ours and we will be sitting on top of the Skybet League One. But here come Bristol Rovers. We still need to be very, very careful. They do look dangerous from out wide and I haven't made my mind up yet what I'm going to do about that. Um, they don't seem to have much of a threat in front of goal as Grant comes forward for Bristol Rovers and this is going to be another cross but that goes harmlessly into the side netting. Um, no, I, I was going to force them inside, but they're not actually, actually looking dangerous from these crosses. And here's a corner for Bristol Rovers. They are putting us under a little bit more pressure now, though, as the ball's cleared up towards Abraham. But he's no chance of getting on the end of that. And here come Bristol Rovers again. Moving down that right-hand side. Now, I do need, I do know that the threat is from the right-hand side, so we are going to do something about that. Um, we'll either press Grant a little bit more, or we are going to put um, Lewis on a defend um, role in order to just to track him a little bit better. But at the moment, it's Newport with Parker. Parker, who's having a good, solid game for us at the back. Uh, he finds Lewis. Lewis back to Parker. Lewis again. Now, what can Lewis do? Lewis lumps one forwards towards Abraham. Abraham's in on goal, and Abraham has scored. And that has made it. Bristol Rovers nil. Newport three. And I think that's probably game over. Abraham, that's his third goal of the season as well as Farkasen and, and he's loving life at the moment. He's attracting a lot of attention from bigger clubs, we'd expect that. But that is just Abraham, that's what he does. Um, he's a player that um, we hope that we can keep hold of for some time to come. And here's Lewis with a throw, can we make it four? And he finds Pask. Pask, who's also had a great game at the back for Newport. He finds Lakin, who seems very comfortable in the midfield there. And Sterry passes it back to Farkasen. Farkasen has been immense at the beginning of this season. Here's Lakin. Lakin, he looks for he looks for Brown and Brown. He has a stab at goal, and unfortunately though straight at the goalkeeper. And we'll make a couple of changes in a moment. We're going to soar up the defence a little bit. We're going to bring Sweeney down into a defensive midfield area. Um, we'll take Brown off. And we're just going to be trying to keep possession a little bit more um, and see the game out. And we're pre at, at the end of the game now. And it's going to be a victory for Newport. Another victory and uh, there's a cross going in that's well blocked. Here's Anderson. Can Anderson get one across? Yes, he can, but it's well defended by Newport again. Grant. Grant picks up the pace. And they are looking to score a late consolation, but that is full-time. And the full-time score is, New is Bristol Rovers nil, Newport 3. And so I'm just about as shocked as anybody because after two games, we are actually top of the Skybet League One. But I know it's not going to remain that way for the rest of the season. Um, we've had a really, really impressive beginning to the season. We are also in the third round of the Caribou Cup and we have drawn Tottenham at home. A game I shouldn't be looking forward to, but why not? We seem to be beating anybody. 
And despite bringing in seven new players, I've never seen the dynamic screen like that so early in the season. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. But we are enjoying life here at Newport at the moment. Everybody is happy. It's a happy town. It's a happy club. And long may it last. And so we have begun our season in the Skybet League One. And we couldn't have wished for a better start. And I'll be back around about the Wickham or the Oxford game when I'm sure that things are not going to be looking as grand as this. If you like the video, give us a big thumbs up and do all that subscribing stuff and to help the channel grow. And all that remains to be said is, I will see you in September. <laughs>